yourself. Um, the packet you will want to have. I mean, you don't necessarily, you don't need it. We're going to read the poems aloud, but it'll be, we're going to talk about the poems a little bit that we, that are in the packet. So um, just like for your reference to see them um, and to read along and we will need them fairly soon. So I'm going to get us going because it's seven o'clock and I'm sure you have a lot to cover. So I'm Tori with Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets and I am going to in, uh, introduce Angela for those of you that are not familiar with her and um, I will monitor and so if there is background noise I will mute people so if you are asked to speak double check that I haven't muted you um, but Angela Borges Hills is a writer teacher editor and community organizer her debut collection of poems Louder Birds was awarded the Lena Miles Weaver Todd Poetry Prize and her poems have appeared or are forthcoming in Kenyan Review Online, Best New Poets, Hayden's Fairy Review, Memor Memorius, New Ohio Review, and Prairie Schooner, among other journals and anthologies. She has received grants from the Sustainable Arts Foundation and Key West Literary Seminar, as well as fellowship at Writers Room of Boston. She lives with her family in Milwaukee, and is a PhD student at UW-Milwaukee there. Thank you, Tori. Yep. Take it All away, right. Angela. Thank you. I just had to double check that I wasn't, like that I didn't accidentally mute myself again. <laughs> I tend to, to do that. All right, so I am very excited um, to see this many people here. This is so many people. Thank you all for joining me um, and the rest of us tonight. Um, I know it is cold, so I hope you are all cozy and excited to start writing. Um, as Tori said, I am Angela Boris Hills. Um, I've been teaching workshops in the community and um, in universities for a very long time. And um, these kinds of workshops, like community workshops, where everybody um, is just excited to be here and write together, are my favorite thing. Um, so I'm very, I'm very excited to be here with you tonight. Um, so the packet of poems that I sent, um, it's a very large packet of poems, and we won't talk about all of the poems in it. Um, but I do just like to have a lot of poems for, so just so that, like, hopefully, there's something in here that you are into that maybe gets you thinking in a different way that maybe makes you see poetry a little differently and maybe you find a new favorite poet. Um, so we'll talk about a couple of poems. Um, we'll be doing a lot of writing. Uh, I like to do my writing prompts in stages. So um, I give you one kind of thing to think about. You write for about five minutes or so. I give you another thing to think about. You write for a while. Um, another thing to write, think about, write for a while, we'll read a poem, and then you kind of tie all of those things together after you read the poem and discuss the poem. Um, hopefully then you have essentially like a bunch of notes, um, and then you'll like look at the craft of a poem to see how that poet is handling those same ideas. Um, oh, it looks like we just started screen sharing. <laughs> um, all right, Tori, is, can you change that? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's what that's what we'll be doing today. All right. Um, so if um, I guess I'm trying to think if the easiest way to when we start talking about the poems, if you want to chime in with comments or I, um, or questions about the poems. I don't know if raising your hand is maybe the best way to do that, um, just so that we can, um, more, there's so many people I don't want everybody to try to talk simultaneously because then it just gets confusing. Thanks, Tori. Um, all right, so to start, we're just going to kick it off um, right away with a writing prompt. Um, so if you are ready to write, I am ready to give you some things to write about. Um, let's see here. So I'll give you a minute to get your pen or your computer ready. And we're gonna start by thinking about how you marked the changing of seasons when you were younger. So think about, I mean, when you were really young, when you were a teenager, whatever that means to you, uh, you know, 
three years ago, whenever you were younger, how did you mark the changing of the seasons? Um, were the seasonal changes linked to like a holiday or certain people or activities? Do you remember any certain smells or tastes? Um, I personally remember in winter as a kid, the smell of my scarf as it got damp, like with my breath when I was walking. Um, it's such a weird mem like smell memory. Um, were you with other people? Were you alone? Uh, do you remember any particular clothes that you were excited about changing into during the season? So think about all of those things. And it's a lot of stuff. So I'll give you about seven minutes to just kind of write about how you mark the changing of seasons when you were young. Angela, are these prompts anywhere uh, that we can get at them at another computer? Um, do you, like, if I share them somewhere, I can put them on this Google site that I just shared that link to. Would that help? Yep. Let me do that for you quick. So I'm going to put both parts of the prompt up, but only look at the first part. <laughs> And how do I access it? Um, just give me one second to add it to the site and then I'll, the link to the site should be, let me grab another page here quick. So I just put the link in the chat if you want to find the prompt there.
There's about a minute left. All right, so now think about how you mark the changing of seasons now. How have the seasons changed for you or changed in general compared to when you were younger? What kinds of things do you do to mark the seasons now? What kind of details like sensory things do you think of when you think about the changing of seasons? Um, so think about that and write again. Um, we'll do maybe five minutes on this round.
around 30 seconds to finish up this thought. All right, so we'll pause here um, and we're going to read a poem in the packet now. Um, so again, if you don't have the packet, the link to the Google site is in the chat. Just kind of scroll around in there, it's in there. Um, we're going to read the poem Chorus. Um, I should have, or the chorus, I should have probably put page numbers on this thing, so I apologize. Um, I believe it's page, I'm on page three here. Yeah, so it's like the third page, or if you're looking online, just scroll down a little bit. It's by Craig Morgan Teicher, Teicher, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, okay, so we're going to read this poem. Um, what I find um, fascinating, okay, I just got a request to share it on screen. Let me see here. Just give me a minute to close all of these guys here. Sorry, just doing a lot of navigating. Um, all right, you all with me here? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so we are down here. Um, all right, so the chorus by Craig Morgan Teicher. Um, what I really think is fascinating about the idea of transition, um, if, I th if we think about it just as like being one thing and then being another thing, right? Like that change that happens. Um, there are a lot of times when it's like a moment and that change happens and we realize it and we're like, this is a profound moment of change. Um, but then there are also like changes and transitions that happen over long periods of time that we don't realize until much later. Um, and so the, the relationship, I guess, between time and transition is really fascinating to me. Um, and, and how you acknowledge that transition is, is really fascinating to me. Um, so I'll go ahead and read this poem and then we'll talk a little bit about how time is working in this poem um, and how sound is working in this poem. So maybe pay attention to like the sound and how time is working, what stands out to you? What do you like about the poem? What do you notice about it? Um, and then we'll talk about it for a little bit. A little bit. So the chorus, one, it's, you know, the part that repeats the bit you're supposed to remember, the bit that bears repeating, the part that means something new each time, something different, and the same thing too, the thing you can't forget that gets stuck in your head. So like childhood, ch so like childhood is endless and over almost as soon as it begins. Yeah, like that. 10 years shrinks like the pages of a water damaged book. No, the pages don't really shrink or shrivel. They crinkle, get kind of crisp and brittle, but times like that, a wrinkle, and suddenly you've been married as long as you were ever a kid, ever awash in the intermin interminable Thursday of your first 10 years, when three months was an eon, when like childhood was endless and over as soon as it began. See what I did there? shifted the refrain into the middle. Yeah, time is like that. And suddenly your newborn is 10 and your wife is celebrating the birthday only grownups do. And you must be older than your mom was at your age. And it's not Thursday, was it ever? And the two pills you have to take every night. How is it Sunday? I mean, Monday, this morning, your alarm, your coffee grumbling, thunder, and the kids, two of them suddenly are out the door and their childhood is endless and already over as soon as it begins and you're on the bus to work. See what I did there? I don't. 
the four pills you have to take three times every day, you might as well already, as well be already at your desk, your deathbed, holding your daughter's grown up hand. You hope the hospital calm and clean and clean like the one your mother died in. And there's hopefully money somewhere to take care of everything. And this is like childhood, endless and over as soon as it begins or as close as you'll ever get again. See what I did there? Did you see, did anyone? All right, so I'm going to, I don't know if I can see people's hands raising and share my screen at the same time. So if it's okay, I'm going to stop sharing now and hopefully enough of you have the poem in front of you to comment and we can talk about it. Um, yeah, so I guess I would love to hear what anybody has to say about, like, what do you think is happening with time in this poem? Um, what do you think about how the, the sound is moving the poem? What do, you, what do you think? What do you like about it generally? Um, we'll just talk about it for a little while before we move on to another prompt. All right, so we have a chat. Um, I like the end with a question because all of life and time is a question, Jan says. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I think ending with a question is exactly that, right? Um, it, it really, that is life. Like, did anyone, did anyone see like it happened so fast, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And then the repetition too is definitely well, placed and I think helps perpetuate that sense of speed, right? Like the, the pacing is so, it's just so fast. Um, yes, um, moving the palm with short lines, repetition, alliteration. Yeah, those short lines are so, they move quickly, right? Um, and the, yes, the alliteration, the sounds are really, um, there's a specific spot um, where is it here? Oh yeah, no, the pages don't really shrink or shrivel. They crinkle, get kind of crisp and brittle. Like, do you hear how fast that language moves? It's so fast. Um, and I feel, I just, you get the sense that that time is, is life, right? Like that's how fast life is moving all the time. Um, okay, and then I like the comparisons of time to one another, married is long as a lot. Yes, um, that's such a fascinating way to think about time, right? This line, um, where is it? Where he's married, um, he, like he's been married longer than he was ever a kid or something like that, right? Um, and then like this one about, you must be older than your mom was at your age um, is such an interesting way to mark time. Um, and yeah, going from two pills a day to four pills three times a day. Um, there are lots of really great comments here in the chat. Like, I wish we were all together in a room. This is so exciting. Um, yeah, there's these three parts of the time of the time passage. That's a really interesting point. There's like the, the childhood, the adult, the death. Um, I would even say there are four, like there are having your own children, right? There's like suddenly there are two kids and then they're gone, right? And um, And like not only the speakers, like the speaker kind of um, like foreshadows their own death while also simultaneously talking about his mother's death right at the end where like you hope your daughter will be holding your hand in a hospital room like the way your mother died. Um, yeah, and then we have, hold on, there's so many. Okay, so um, <laughs> yeah, involving the reader. Um, did you see what I did there? Um, like a magician. Um, yeah, um, it is very, it pulls you in and those questions really get you into that same, like you really are invited to put your own life into that same pace, right? To examine your own life in a similar way with those questions, the way that he pulls you in that way. Um, the enjambment is really great. Um, definitely there are, are there, there are like, a couple of periods maybe, but it's mostly commas um, and question marks. 
um, which I feel like is life. <laughs> it's all commas and question marks. Um, um, yes, there's the sense of something escaping from you. I love that. Um, it does feel like a very slippery poem. Like you can't, as soon as you think you know what's happening, like it just keeps like fumbling to the next stanza. <laughs> Um, yes, your desk, your deathbed, that transition is really great. Yes, this idea that childhood is so slow and then it's gone suddenly. Um, yes, right, yes. Oh my gosh, I love all this time is fleeting and it flows into other stages, moves quickly. Oh, here, Fred, how does the title fit in? I would love to hear how everybody else thinks about this. Like, so the chorus, the part of a song that repeats, right? Um, also Greek choruses. Does anybody else have thoughts on the title, the chorus? I, th I think, I think it's, I agree with uh, Renee about uh, the chorus being the part of a song that repeats because the bit that it repeats in here is the line about um, it's endless and over as soon as it begins. And he repeats that through all three sections. So even though childhood has that sense, so does middle age, so does your older, older life. Um, so I think it is the refrain. It is, it is, that's what the title refers to. I, I agree with that. <laughs> oh, thank you for that observation. I did not see that connection. And of course, uh, while you were speaking, it added to me, the chorus, the refrain will be the last part of the song that we will hear too. So not only is it the repetition, but it's also the last sound you hear too. Thank you, that helped. I also think it's see what I did there, see what I did there that he tacks in because, you know, did you see my childhood? Did you see my middle age? Did you see my older age? So I think that's a refrain as well. Yeah, yeah, that's see what I did there. And then, you know, at the end, did anyone? Um, again, I think I, I, if I'm remembering correctly about like the Greek chorus, I mean, weren't they the ones who kind of like stood around the action and kind of stated the obvious? Was, is that right? Like they kind of gave you a narrative like, here's what's going on, people. Um, yeah, and so that's interesting that like, that this is like the background to everyone's play, right? To this everyone. is no Greek chorus. <laughs> but I feel the chorus as a musical um, element um, adds to the whole uh, slow development of emotion, not just of a sense of loss, but of um, grief. And so by the end, I feel um, sad. You know, that, that emotion has come to the fore. Um, my life is over. Um, I hope you noticed. But, you know, those of us who witness that life, because we do um, feel sad at its loss. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, yes, I, I love that. Yes, I love that. I, I just got two meanings to, did you see what I did there? As you read the poem, when that line came up, I thought the poet was drawing attention to my cleverness with words. I repeated, I brought you back, I recycled. Did you see what I did with my words in the poem? But then the last comment said, there's a layer on top of that for each part of his life did you see what I did from age birth to 10? Did you see what I did when I raised my children? Did you see me in the hospital? And he ends, of course, with, did anyone? Yeah. Ooh, ah. Right, right. That's stiff. <laughs> that's stiff. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's exactly the thing, right? Um, it turns that way where you're, where you're like, okay, in the beginning, you see like, that the poet has a lot of control over the poem and they're doing this, they're setting it up this way and they keep doing that repetition. Did you see what I did there? Like how I turned this back on itself? Like, right, it comes across as being kind of clever. Like, see, I keep doing this. I'm kind of working with the time here. But then that last did anyone, that turn is so like, 
oh, it just washes through your body because yes, exactly. I love, that's my, this poem, that's what my poem, that's what this poem does for me too. Um, yeah. Did you see what I did with my life? Um, that repetition, it's, it's, it's a rough one. It's good. Um, yeah. So uh, like I said before, like the thing that's most fascinating to me about transition is the way that time works. And I think this particular poem is really a good, like representative about like how you can use time in your poems because it doesn't, it's not a chronological poem, right? He's not saying like, I did this thing and then I did this thing and then I got married and then my mom died and then my kids grew up and now I will die, right? There's not, it's not like a chronological poem. And what I think is interesting about that is even though like our lives are technically like chronological, obviously our memories and the way that we think isn't necessarily chronological. And I think when we think about how we've grown and changed over time, we bounce back and forth in our memories, just the way this poem does. Um, so I just, I find that really fascinating. Um, so I guess what I would like for us to do is think now about the notes that we took um, in this first prompt. And with them, I would like you to think um, about ways that you might combine those ideas about how you responded to seasons changing when you were younger and how you respond to them now. Um, and, you know, in this time, if you are kind of working with these notes and you want to incorporate other memories from different times in your life, you can definitely do whatever makes sense to you. Um, but think about ways that you can combine those ideas, not chronologically. So um, can you somehow incorporate maybe like the perpetuality of seasonal changes into your experiences of the changing seasons as you changed throughout time? Um, are there ways to kind of explore these details at the same time, not chronologically? Does that make sense? Okay. So, so that's the next part of the prompt. And I'm gonna put that part into the chat um, because I found that if I try to just keep updating that site, it's just, it doesn't necessarily work very well. So I'll just put that next part in the chat. All right. Um, so we'll take about seven minutes to kind of work with those ideas and, and making them not chronological putting it all together into a draft.
30 seconds left. All right, so now we are going to move on. Um, hopefully you have like enough of something to work with after all of that writing. Um, hopefully you are working towards a draft. You're, you're getting there with this piece. Um, but we'll move on to another one. Um, so we're gonna think now about kind of the opposite um, of these like long-term transitions and think about um, a very specific transition. So, so if we think for a little bit about like an actual very specific moment in your life when you realized nothing would be the same. Um, so for me, that moment, uh, like one of those moments, there were obviously many, um, but I had my first child when I was 19. Um, and it wasn't until like that first Christmas with my baby that I realized that like, I'm no longer the kid in the room, right? Um, like Christmas will never be the same. Like I will no longer be the child, right? Um, so think about some kind of very specific moment that you thought like nothing will be the same and write for a while about that moment in as much detail as possible. So maybe like how you thought it might be if it wasn't the same. Um, what exactly was happening at the time. Um, so just write um, about five minutes um, on that. And I'll put that prompt in part one of that prompt in the chat here.
About 30 seconds here. All right, so part two of this prompt is in the chat. Um, so now think back to the time before that moment. What do you wish you would have spent more time on? What do you wish you would have appreciated more or paid closer attention to? Um, think about all the ways that that time was special. What did you not realize that you would miss about that time um, until that moment? Um, so write about all of those things in as much detail as possible um, and take about five minutes for that. Angela, could you repeat that, those prompt? Yeah, yeah sure. So, um, so think back to the time before that moment. Um, what do you wish you would have spent more time on? Um, what do you wish you would have appreciated more or paid closer attention to? Um, and think about all the ways that that time was special or like what did you not realize that you would miss? Um, so just write all of that in detail for about five minutes. Um, it's in the chat as well if you want to look at it.
There's about a minute left. All right, so now um, this one's gonna be a little bit shorter of a, of a writing burst. Um, so think of now about who you are looking back at all of this. What do you know now about who you are that you wouldn't have known if it weren't for that moment? So how has it changed you into who you are now, that, that big moment of change? So I was asked to repeat the prompt. Um, it is in the chat if you want to take a look at the chat. But um, so you're just looking back at um, at what you know about who you are now that you wouldn't know if it hadn't been for that moment.
All right. So we are going to take a look at another poem. And I will pull it up here on my screen. Um, and I just got a chat asking if these prompts are available after um, this. And I will put everything on the Google site. Um, so just make sure to like copy that link and paste it somewhere. Um, I think this is what I'm doing here. Yeah, okay, here I am. Um, all right, um, so if you wanna copy the link to this site and paste it like on your own document so you don't lose it, um, then I will go ahead and put all the prompts up here for you so you can refer back to them. Um, we're gonna look at the poem Salad Days by Barbara Ross. Um, so how easy then the fun house at Lincoln Park before it grew into a field of weeds. You could buy five tickets for a buck from a blank face in a booth and enter the dark with your brother to be scared by tilting floors, phony doors, corpses bursting out of coffins and once into, out into blue sky dash breathless to your mother and father dazed. You could have called them salad days, but why would you? No one in your family had read Shakespeare. So you bought French fries, doused them with malt vinegar, the four of you competing for your share of potatoes improved by salt and grease and nothing in those early evenings free of care could have prepared you to be the last one left, the one with grief to spare. So I'll just leave this one up here because uh, it's short and you can read it all here too. Um, so I would love to just know first thoughts about the poem. What do you think about the moment of transition here? or again, how time is working. All right, so I've got, it's sudden and effective. Um, can you explain what you mean, Renee? How is it, like what's effective and like what's sudden about it? And anybody else can can chime in if, if, if they, okay, so here we go, yeah. Yeah, what's I think um, like some of the other people are commenting in the chat, I, um, they, author does such a great job of painting a picture of sort of innocence and abandon and um, childhood at this park and the bulk of the poem is spent um, creating that mood and only the last few lines are really about that transition from like childhood joy to being the last one left with grief to spare. So it feels very sudden and um, you don't really see it coming as other people have said. So there's a jolt of um, like sadness that happens because you aren't anticipating, um, you know, and other people are commenting on the salad days line, which I'll let somebody else comment on, but um, yeah, I think that's why I said it's sudden and very effective. Yeah, yeah, I think that is, those are all really great points. Definitely, um, there's like this beautiful memory and then like, bam, at the end, right? Like you don't see it coming, which I think is just like how it happens, right? Like it's, everything is very lovely and then suddenly, right, then bam, you're looking back. Um, um, all right, let's see, yes. Um, I, um, I think she actually begins to foreshadow the setup in the second line 
when she talks about the fun house before it grew into a field of weeds. So there's that little bit in there, but yet the first half is really bouncy. It's bouncy. She plays with words in a really fun way. Um, but yet there is that, there is that subtle bit in there at the very beginning. Yeah, definitely. And there is right. Even like, even though it seems like fun, we're in a fun house and like, but we're still talking about like the phony doors and corpses bursting out of coffins. And like, it's very, it's kind of like a, it's like dark, but also, um, I don't know, like, it's interesting how as children you play with, with the ideas of death. Right. And then like, here she is at the end alone. Um, yeah, but, but that moment of like dashing breathless into your mother and father, right. To your mother and father, um, Let's see, the French fries makes make the sense of smell and taste alive. Yes, like those, definitely the senses in here are doing, like the sensory details are so good. I mean, you can kind of feel the tilting floors, um, the sounds. I don't know if you noticed the sounds too, like tilting floors, phony doors, corpses bursting out of coffins and out once out into blue sky. Like those like, da, 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 da. It, it really kind of, it really kind of moves that, that uh, the sounds kind of move that, move you through that space in a way, right? Like you can feel the tilting, like you're there. Um, yeah, and grief to spare. Um, the child, right. the child, uh, the child's life is so active and sensuous. And then at the end, it's completely still. The, the moment of not death, but grief, where you just, you're just stopped. And um, I like that contrast. That's part of that jolt, I think. Yes, definitely. Yes, it's very heavy at the end. Like, it's just like a, yes. Definitely. Am I the only one who doesn't get the Shakespeare reference and salad days? No, you're not. <laughs> I got no idea what no, that I've taught me. Shakespeare for years. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody know the Shakespeare salad days reference? No. I just I looked it up. <laughs> okay. Do you want to explain it? Well, it says a period of your life when you were young and next in experience unexperienced so it's like being green you know your salad days did that come from shakespeare yeah it did anthony yeah, cleopatra did. apparently cleopatra <laughs> oh wow i gotta look that up Indeed. yeah it's in the somebody just shared it in the chat for you okay so if, you, if you look in the chat the there's like a good um, Katrina's put it in there for you. So it's, it's very thorough. It's, it's a good one, but it's a good, I feel like I, I am much smarter knowing about, <laughs> about it, this idea. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Whoever got it up there. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, yeah, wow. the first enclosed parts. Um, even that, like, if you see that, like, it's kind of fuller in the beginning and just kind of gets more sparse toward the end is interesting. Um, yeah, there are a lot of really cool things happening here. Um, any other things that you want to comment on about the poem? You mentioned about transition can be related to time. And it, we've sort of touched on this already, but the fact that we're really just talking about one careful anecdote, one great memory, and then dropped in with this, we don't know how much time has elapsed from the childhood until uh, everybody else is gone. But I think we've compressed time greatly. And that's a fascinating tool. Yes, yes, definitely. I love that observation that it's kind of compressed into this space. Yes, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and you can almost sense like, um, 
like that you almost feel like you are in the moment where she suddenly realizes like i am the last one left right um because that that must be such a big one particular moment that you realize that right like it's not necessarily a thing that gradually happens and like kind of comes and goes but it's just like one bold thing that happens finally where you're like i am the last one left um which is like so grief heavy um which just makes that like that turn at the end so hard right um but yes i love that idea of of kind of condensing all of because you do in that one memory you get a sense of who this family was i think right i mean i, I feel like i feel like i understand the relationships in this family and like how loving it, it all seems right um mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think you're right the poem is because it's short that emphasizes um the idea of compression i think that was a a wonderful observation, but the poem shape, it's also top heavy with happiness. Mm -hmm. And so that's the life we are being, uh, you know, that we, we experience is a very happy, sociable, family oriented, fun. Um, and then towards the end, there's little left. The poem narrows so quickly, really. Um, and then just that final uh, little stump to stand on, which is, I'm still standing, but what's the point? Right, yeah, like I've got grief to spare, oh. and, right? So, yeah, well, don't you think, don't you think that the poem is connected for me in that there is something about a fun house and grief, like grief is something like a fun house. It's like something like a fun house with the tilting floors and the corpses. Oh, the scary place, you mean? Which is that your reality is kind of warped? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if you, right, if you read through it the first time and you get that punch at the end and then you go back and read it, you do, I do think you pick up on those like more kind of solemn like again like foreshadowing the grief to come right um yeah the idea I like that idea that grief is like a fun house that it you right like the floor is kind of falling from under your feet you don't know where you are um yeah definitely yeah um, and you know when um when you're first encountering as a young child um you're, when you first encounter these corpses of older people, when you first go to a funeral or whatever, I mean, I, you know, I can remember when I, the first funeral I remember being at, and I very, I don't know how young I was, but it was a phony corpse as far as I was concerned. And I blurted that out right in the middle of the funeral parlor. He's breathing, he's just sleeping. I got whisked out of there. Yeah. And grief is very much like that as an adult sometimes. Um, not that you, not, not that you, you know that, you know the person is not alive because you know that but you walk around um in grief and you see all these people who remind you of the person who just died I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced that but that's been my experience so that fun house thing that weird the phony corpses and you know, these people, I, you know, am I, it's very real. Grief is, yeah, like you said, a, a fun house. Yeah, yeah, it but definitely yeah, messes with when your When you're done, and you, you have your family that you come running back to and they comfort you. And then you get to that point where 
you know, you don't have your parents to help you comfort and sort that through that, that weird feel all those weird feelings. And, and when you've become the last one in your family, which isn't really true for a whole lot of us, because most of us, most of us do have some other family somewhere. So this talked to me, spoke to me about um, the closeness of, um, you know, who, who we call family towards the end of our lives. Um, yeah, that makes and a coming lot through that grief, you know, because are we really the last one? You know, you might have cousins or um, maybe you don't have your parents or your siblings, but are there any cousins? Is there family? And then how does that go with how we define um, who we are? And I, there's this strength that comes in being alone as well. Um, an experience of learning how to comfort and take care of yourself That's is really it. important, I think. I agree. Yeah, definitely. I think those are all definitely very valid points. Thanks, June. Um, yeah, I so I stopped sharing my screen because I wanted to, there are a bunch of questions and other things happening, and I also wanted to try to squeeze in another prompt. Um, so I'm just going to jump over here quick. So um, Lucy says that it's all one sentence, which is an amazing point, because again, we have just this giant, the way time moves without pause right until the end um is like it kind of goes fast that way um jan is asking if the poem works as well without the shakespeare reference um some people are saying i think so maybe it's more accessible without it um kathy is saying um that like it kind of references that they're like maybe more like working class and not intellectuals some people are really into the Shakespeare reference. Um, I personally like love the Shakespeare reference. I like the idea of salad days being these like days of like greener, greener things is really interesting to me. Um, I guess like I did have to look it up, but I felt like a smarter person for it. <laughs> so, um, and, and it's something that I was like, I want to use that. That's amazing. And to be honest, like I've heard a lot of people use it since I learned about it. So I, I think it's like a more common phrase maybe than, than I originally personally knew about. Um, Ted, Ted oh. Goozer says, when you make those kinds of allusions, you already limit your audience uh, uh, significantly. Well, did anybody feel put out by the title? Like, did anybody not like the, see, I think, I mean, there are some that probably work better than others, right? So like if it had been, um, I don't know, something more, um, I don't know, something more aloof, <laughs> right? Something more than, than maybe, but I feel like this yeah. one is easy enough. Salad, it's not like big fancy words, it's salad days, right? I think you can kind of. Right, and it establishes the, like the class education of the family. Um, yes, it, it's oh. almost kind of a cliche term and it sets up a certain type of expectation of a certain kind of flowery, you know, kind of, and it's not flowery. It's, it's like, you know, fries with malt vinegar anyway. So yeah. I, I, thought, I thought it worked. Yes, yes. I think it's, I, I think I, it's, in, I think it's interesting that many people in the class didn't know it was Shakespeare, the source of it. As a result, we all learned something this evening. So that was a good thing. Um, yes. Win. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so we have six minutes left. These, my biggest problem with these workshops is that like, I always wanna just talk 
forever about these things. Like I still have like a whole big prompt to do and more poems I want to read. Like if I could read every one of these poems with you, I would happily do so. Um, but we have six minutes. So what I'd like to do, oh, we still have to finish this prompt. Okay. So we have to finish this prompt. Um, and then I'm just going to share my other prompt on this site with you so that you have it, um, because it's a good prompt. And, um, and I would encourage you then, um, if you're coming back next month to um, finish your poems that you started today, and maybe if you work on this other one that I'm going to give you the prompt for, um, and then like if you want to read the rest of the poems in this packet, honestly, like some of the poems are so great, and I couldn't even I wanted to share them with you, but if I read them, I start to cry, and it's embarrassing. So I highly recommend reading this whole packet. Um, I will say before we um, go on to the next thing too, that um, there's a poem in here, um, two of them called an Aubade, A-U-B-A-D-E. Um, and those are poems um, that like occur during the dusk, um, which is interesting to me as a period of transition. Like, so they are poems, or not dusk, dawn, reverse. So they're poems that um, are for, um, for the dawn, right? Um, things that happen at dawn. It was like typically, like old school, it was like lovers parting at dawn, um, but it's kind of evolved into like poems of like things happening at dawn. So, um, so that's a thing that's happening in this packet too. If you're like, how is this a poem transition? That's how. Um, okay, so I just jabbered a lot fast so that I could get to this last bit of this prompt. Let me pull it up here. Okay, so. Um, what you're going to do with the prompt um, that we just were talking about, um, where you had this moment in your life where you realized nothing would be the same and like now you're looking back on it. Um, what I'd like you to do is go through all of those notes and find a way to connect them. Um, maybe they connect chronologically or thematically or move back and forth in time. Um, but can you make that last part of the prompt, that part where you're looking back um, and have become a different person and you realize how you've changed, can you make that last part of the prompt looking back maybe one or two lines that really turn the poem on its head? Like, can you do that? It, it's tricky. Um, and I think it's a really interesting challenge to kind of take, condense so much into like a line or two. Um, so we're going to close out the workshop with that last prompt. Um, and I will put the other prompts in. Uh, Tori, is it easiest for me to give you the rest of this stuff in an email or should I put it all on this website? I don't know. Why don't you do both? That sounds perfect. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. I will do both. They'll be on the site. Um, and I will give you again that um, um, link here in the chat. So I will put that here. And then I will let you silently write um, the rest of this prompt. And then you will have more prompts in, at the site. Um, I'll do it later tonight. And um, also, I will give them to Tori for an email to send to you. Yeah, and I would just add a few housekeeping notes that if you are going to contribute a poem to the discussion for the next session on February 17th, if you could email it to me by February 14th, that should be a date everybody can remember. <laughs> Valentine's Day. And then in, by my experience, we can really only cover 20 poems in a 90 minute Zoom session. So if there are more than 20, I will do a random drawing and then share the others by email. So yes, thank you, Angela. That was great. I hope everybody got some good poem starters out of that. Yes. Um, hold on one second. I'm trying to put this in the um, this prompt. I think I'm like, oh, I've got a lot of screens open trying to put this last prompt into the chat so that you can have it. Um, okay. Let me see here quick. Um, um, okay, I think, listen, there are a lot of grammatical errors happening here, but um, there's that. So there's that last part of the prompt. Um, the website will be updated later 
tonight. Um, I have to go take care of like tucking in kids and things quick, but I'll put all that information on the website tonight. So like hopefully by later this evening, you will be able to access the prompts on that website and I will send them to Tori for an email as well. Yep. And I will share the recording, the prompts by email, by uh, link, and then a reminder on when to submit me submit poems. So you'll have all that in your email short. Well, in the next couple of days. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Tori. This was really wonderful. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you everybody thank you. for attending. It was a great evening. Thank you. It was good evening. Thank you.